Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 11 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the physical step-by-step -step assembly of one of the MFCDs. Let's buckle up. Laid out before us are these six layers and also the components and all the parts that will go into it. So if we have a glance now at one of the completed MFCDs and when all the other parts are together we'll have a, a duplicate of this. Let's take a close up look. Layer 1, the front of the MFCD, the tactile caps that will protrude through that. Layer 2, the back of the main bezel and the PCBs that will fit into that and all the various wiring that will feed through that. Layer 3 which is a jig to hold the LCD screen that we see and the controller on the left, the PCB that drives that, then goes on to layer 4 that we see now. Layer 5 has a cooling fan and finally that leaves layer 6 for the RJ45 sockets to connect all of this into the keyboard encoder. The assembly starts with layer 2 and inserted into that are the spacers that the PCBs will sit on and also long M3 screws that extend downwards. On the underside of layer 2 nuts sit in counterboards that hold these in place and the reason they're in counterboards is because it's important that layer 3 fits right up against it. The process now begins of taking the PCBs soldering the wires to them and then fitting them into layer 2. As each one gets inserted I run a continuity test to ensure the tactile switch itself is working as it should but also all of the backlighting. At this point all of the PCBs are in place and all the wiring is running through the conduits underneath them and then through holes at the bottom. Of the tactile caps made I take the ones with the clearest engraving put them onto the PCBs and then we're ready to enclose this unit by inserting layer 1. This layer has had some work done post print to give it the right finish. If we look inside you can see a typical 3D print and what that looks like but we've took it to this point here just so aesthetically it does look that bit better. As we put this into place it's a fairly snug fit we don't want the cutouts too large because otherwise there'll be a bleed through of the back lighting around the edges of the tactile caps but equally we don't want it too small that it's an obstruction to pressing the tactile buttons themselves. Once in place all the buttons do move nice and freely. That's layers 1 and 2 assembled. Let's just take a minute to have a closer look. The LCD screen is now inserted into layer 3 which is a jig. You can see a little bit of extra clearance given to allow for the ribbon cable. Let's have a look at the profile of this from a side view and then we can see that it will fit right up closely against layer 2. The placement of it is in portrait rather than landscape. That was the way I did it so there was a room to the left and right for the wiring to pass through the holes that you see. It does mean that within Windows you do have to rotate it as a display. Of the original screen protector on the LCD I've just cut off and used the top and bottom bits just so that bit that sits behind the 3D printed plastic won't get marked or scratched. Let's now have a close look at layers 1, 2 and 3. Now they're combined into one unit. Layer 4 holds a PCB that drives the LCD. It also has a number of cable glands which are there to hold the wiring so there's no chance that a sudden accidental tug on them could pull away the 
solder connections that sit at the back of the tactile PCBs. I line everything up and start feeding through the wiring. On each of the M3 screws that are protruding through layer 3, I've put on three nuts and that means that layer 4 will sit on the top of the third nut across all of them and it suspends it at just the right height for the ribbon cable as it passes across. And as we can see now that then also nicely aligns with the socket that it clicks into on the PCB. Layer 5 holds a cooling fan which is aligned to direct the airflow at the PCB. The distance of the spacers between layers 4 and 5 can be altered according on the airflow that you want to get to the PCB. I've also added a small distribution board which will allow me to plug in a 12 volt supply and in turn that will feed through and power the fan and all of the LEDs. You can now see all of the wiring that feeds into that board. The wires for the fan also pass through a switch which sits on the top layer, layer 6, and we can see that now. As well as this switch, we also have the keystone jacks that the wiring will plug in the back of, and then they'll click into these rectangular cutouts. There's also two small spacers in place which are there ready to hold the physical input buttons for the LCD screen should you not want to use a remote or use those instead. With layer 6 in place I can now take the wiring below it and start feeding them into those keystone jacks. We also get a view here of the work we've done so far in the assembly. I just removed layer 6 so I've got a bit of extra space as I use a punch down tool to put the wiring into the keystone jacks. We now pop layer 6 back on, click all of the various connectors in place and the unit is now completed. This is probably a good time to mention that although online you'll often see downloadable projects and people then will mirror exactly what's in the project. If I was to do this over again, there's quite a few things I would do differently. If at the beginning of building this I'd have known which type of screen I was going to use, I would have actually have put RJ45 sockets directly on the back of the PCBs and that would have saved all of the extra wiring that passed from those all the way through the other layers and into the keystone jacks. The rear of the MFCD would have always extended some way back however even with the simplification of wiring from the point of view of suspending the cooling fan. In the interest of maintenance and also maybe for upgrades to the tactile caps, layer 1 would have been detachable from the front as opposed to having to disassemble part of the back to get to it. So I guess what I'm really saying here is that rather than this be perhaps something that someone might mirror as a project, I'd probably view it more as something to look at to get some ideas to help you plan what you'll build yourself because as I say whilst this is great and it works as I wanted it to if I was to do it over again I would make certain changes and I'd build it differently. With it now physically built it's time to bring it online and interface it into the computer. So at this point I now take the keyboard encoder and I mount that into a cantilever shelf which will be part of my data cabinet that's the main hub for the Simpit. I put all of the wiring in place here for both of the MFCDs. For each of them there's also a few input spare which I've reserved for other parts of the front dash and there'll be one other one third of the encoder which will be for the upfront controller and that's sitting there waiting for me to put that wiring in place in the future. I've noted down which keyboard bindings I would use for each of the inputs. I've keyed that into the settings of the SIM and I've programmed it on the encoder and now I'm just testing that it's working properly. What's really handy is I've managed to revive an old laptop 
by putting in an SSD and doing a few of the bits to it. And whilst it's not powerful enough to actually fly the simulator, it is just about powerful enough to boot it up and be able to just run system tests like what I'm doing here. I've tested every binding within the sim prior to uploading it to the encoder because there's the odd binding which is not actually allocated to anything within the sim but yet it doesn't work and I can only think that's because there's a purpose for allocation for it within Windows in general. It's been great to build these and there's been a lot of learnings along the way and I'm really happy that I've ticked that box that the MFCDs are ready now for my sim pit. I'll now be spending some time researching into the other key parts of the front dash and thinking through planning the build of those. Thanks for watching.